Hi. In this video, I want to introduce you to file input with class scanner. Scanner is a simple text scanner that can parse primitive types and strings. It breaks its input into tokens using a delimiter. By default, this delimiter is white space. So a scanner would take the information from a stream, reads everything to the next white space, that's a token. Then reads everything to the next white space, that's my next token, etc. And those tokens can be converted into values of different types using various next methods. Here you can see the documentation of class scanner. I'm going to scroll down to the next methods. You can see here we have next. Next reads the next token. Here we have next boolean that would read the next token and interpret it as a boolean. Next float reads the next token, interprets it as a float. Same for int, etc. Now you might wonder what happens if I read the next token with next int, but it really was a double. In that case, it cannot be interpreted as an int, and the input mismatch exception is thrown. Scanner, by the way, also provides a whole number of has methods right here. So it can check does it have a next token? Does it have a next boolean? Does it have a next float? And so I can check whether there is the required token available before I try to read it with my next method. Scanner is often used to read input from a keyboard, but it can also be used to read input from a file. One thing the scanner cannot do is to reposition to the beginning of the file. So once you started to read, you can only continue sequentially. If you want to go back to the beginning, you need to close the file and reopen it. Here is one of the constructors. It is created based on an input stream. Whenever we used scanner for the standard input, the keyboard, we created it with system in. System in is an input stream. But scanner has overloaded constructors, so there's also another version. I could also create a scanner based on a file. Remember, file means path. So I could create a scanner based on a new file that I create with my absolute path C my file dot text. And this is the file I would be reading from if I created my scanner passing this argument. Let's have a look at an example. I would like to read in some data from a file called planet.txt. This time I want to use a relative path, so I'm going to my project folder. I'm going to right click and import my file. Here I'm going to general file system, press my next button. I'm browsing to my file which I have in my C drive and in my demo folder. It's right here. It's called planet.txt and you can see it shows up right here on the same level as my source folder. Now I'm going to create a scanner. I call it input because I'm reading data here I create my new scanner. Many times we based our scanner on system in the standard input stream. This time I base my scanner on a file instance. So here I say new file and I'm going to pass the relative path which is planet.txt. I can see that I need some import statements here, so I'm going to add those. Import Java util dot star and import Java IO dot star. At this point, I see a long red wiggly line. When I roll over it, 
I'm reminded that I have an unhandled checked exception. That gives me two choices. I can either use a try statement or I can add a throws declaration. I want to use a try statement, but I want to use a special try statement, one that got introduced in Java 7. It is called a try with resource statement. What this allows me to do is the following. I can use the keyword try followed by parentheses. And inside those parentheses, I have my resource declaration. Inside those parentheses, I can declare any resource, any instance of a class that implements auto closable. That means any instance of a class that has to be closed when it's no longer needed. Scanner is such a class. Scanner implements auto closable. Before Java 7, I would have had to write my finally block at the end and close scanner. Now I can use this nice syntax and the scanner will be closed automatically. So here is my body. Again, I see a red wiggly line. When I roll over it, it reminds me that I haven't implemented my catch clause yet. So I'm just going to click on my catch clause and here is my file not found exception. I'm going to take out the to do comment. I don't want to print a stack trace though. I'm going to print system out print line file planet.txt could not be found. So at this point, I'm ready to read in information from a scanner. I start by checking whether my input has a next line and if that is the case I'm going to read the planet data token by token. So here I say while my input has next line I want to read the planet data. Let's check our planet.txt file to get the right order. We have a string with a name a double for the distance, an integer for the diameter. By the way, I prepared already a file called planet.java that matches the planet.txt file. So I can, you can see we have three fields, name, distance, diameter, string, double, integer. We have a parameterized constructor. We have a number of getters and setters. And at the end, a two-string method. In my, in my two-string method, I'm going to print the name of the planet, distance colon as a label, the actual distance, AU, that's the unit, astronomical unit. I'm going to use a Unicode character that looks like a crossed out circle as a symbol for diameter, followed by a colon, the actual diameter value, and once again, the unit kilometers. So at this point I'm going back to my demo scanner and I can start reading in the data. I say, well, my string uh, name is input next. My double distance is input next double. My integer diameter is input next int. And at the end of the line, I also want to make sure that I read the new line so I'm ready for the next string in the next line. So here I just read the new line character. Now I have all the data to create a planet object, which I can do right here new planet based on my name, distance and diameter. To keep it simple, I'm only going to print that out. So we have a system out print line statement. And there's one last thing I want to point out. I'm going back to my planet.txt. Notice how all of my different entries have the same pattern, string, double, integer, 
except for the first line. This was a header line. So this header line needs special treatment and outside of my while loop I'm going to read my header line. I use an if statement to check whether there is a next line. So I say import has next line. There's always the possibility that my file could be empty. And if that was the case, I'm going to print the whole header line, system out print line, input next line. At this point, I'm going to give you a quick review. Here is my try statement with a resource. My resource is right next to the try keyword in parentheses. Resource is my scanner. This syntax has the advantage of being concise, of being clear, making my code more simple because I don't need to declare my own finally block to close the scanner at the end. This will be done automatically for me regardless whether an exception is thrown or not. Then inside my try block, I use a if statement to check whether there's at least one line. If so, I print the header line. Then we have a while loop. We go through all the data lines. These are my lines that include the planet data. I read them with the various next methods for string, for double, for an integer. And then at the end, I read the new line before I advance to the next data line. One thing to consider is what happens in my very last line of my planet.txt file. And either I need to check is there really a new line before I print it, or I ensure that planet.txt actually has a new line at the end. So here, after line 9, I had a last new line at the very end. I'm going to switch views here, and I'm going to run. Let's make the window a little bit bigger. And you can see here is my information about the planets that I just read in.